This is the Corality K1C 3D printer, and apparently it takes just three minutes to get it out of the box and powered on. So let's test that claim. Maybe I'm slow, but it took me a bit longer than three minutes to get it plugged in. But it doesn't really matter anyway, because the next steps are setting it up by connecting it to Wi-Fi, syncing it to your account, calibrating and leveling, and then updating to the latest firmware, which is going to take you at least an extra 15 minutes on top. I also spent a few minutes struggling to insert the filament, but the secret was to apply just a little bit of force to get it past this point, then to guide it into the extruder by bending the filament tube here. So all in all, it took around 30 minutes to start 3D printing, which really isn't a bad time at all, right? I only had to look at the instructions once to figure out what to do with this rubber strip. So yeah, the setup was really straightforward, which isn't something I can say about a lot of 3D printers that I own. And now that we're set up and ready to 3D print, a quick thank you to Creality who provided the K1C to check out in this video, along with their Space Pie filament dryer and some of their Hyper Series PLA, but more on those later. For now, I wanna do some real world testing. So let's do some test prints using the included 200 grams of white Hyper PLA. I plugged in the included USB drive and started a quick print for all you Benchy lovers out there. and no complaints from me, this sure is a benchy. So I started another one of my regular tests, my maker coin. In the slicer, I left everything at default settings and then sent it over to the printer. And again, no issues. All the secret codes came out well and the tolerances for the screwdriver bits were spot on. For a 15 minute print, this is exactly the quality I'd expect, even from a more expensive 3D printer. Maybe these were too easy, so let's do something bigger. This is a canister that I quickly drew up in Fusion to be compatible with these Lego canisters. And I think this will be a good real world test because there's going to be a lot of support material and we can see how well that comes off. And there's also going to be some threads with tight tolerances. So let's see how it goes. the support mostly came out in one piece with just a few tiny specks left over to clean up. It was the same story for the lid which had much more support material. I just went around the outside with a knife and then ripped it out with pliers. And again this is almost as flawless as it can be and screwing the two parts together was also really smooth. So the K1C definitely passed these tests, the only real issues were the top layers had a few imperfections. But stick around a bit longer because I'm going to print another one of these but I'm going to slow down the top layer a bit which I think should fix the issue. Now for my next test I want to make sure the K1C pauses the print when it detects we're out of filament and I'm pretty sure I don't have enough filament to completely print this file so let's give it a shot. Okay so we're almost out of filament and let's see if anything happens. And here we go it successfully paused printing so I awkwardly reloaded the filament with one hand and resumed printing. But I did notice there's quite a bit of warping on this print, which has affected the top layer as well because it's been pushing up a bit higher than expected. And I'm 99% sure that this warping is due to temperature. 
So most of the time when printing with PLA, I remove the lid uh, like I did for this print to make sure that the PLA doesn't get too warm. But today it's just super cold in my barely insulated Australian apartment. So I should have probably left the lid on so it didn't get too cold. I think that's what's happening anyway for the next prints. I'll keep the lid on and the dock closed and that should fix the warping issue. Luckily the warping is fairly minor so it should still fulfill its purpose as a spool holder. I just removed some screws from the side then used some slightly longer M3 screws to attach the mount in place. Before I test out the Space Pie filament dryer, I'm going to do one print with this side mount to see if it holds up. This time using Creality's Hyper PLA in blue, and I'm going to print a taller version of the canister design. The first layer went down okay, and because I made the walls really beefy at 2mm thick, uh, it's estimated to take around 2.5 hours, so I'll come back when it's done. Okay, this looks good, so let's take a look at the space pie. Uh, now my tripod is busy filming a time lapse for another project, so I'm back trying to do things one handed, sorry. Anyway, this is the space pie filament dryer, and it's definitely the sleekest filament dryer that I've seen. It opens from the back, and then you can guide the filament through the hole in the top. It has a few options for selecting the temperature unit, type of filament, and how long you want to dry it for. And selecting the material type will automatically set the recommended temperature and time to dry out the filament. So ABS would be a higher temperature and also take longer than PLA for example. Also a PTF tube is also provided so you can route the filament around the back. The next part that I need to print is the canister lid and this time I've removed the text from the top, changed the top layer pattern to an Archimedes spiral and also slowed down the top layer printing speed by 50%. And hopefully these changes will give us a really nice surface finish. And here it is. The supports again came off really easily, leaving only a few remnants that could easily be picked off. And just look at how smooth the top layers are. Like I wish all my 3D printers could produce results this good. Honestly, this is just a perfect print. And these are all the things I've printed so far over the past few days. Besides the warping on the one print, there were zero other print issues and I'm really happy with how all of these turned out. Now this was just a really quick overview and not an in-depth review. I've only had the K1C for a week or so now and there are still some things that I haven't tested like printing with carbon fiber reinforced filament or playing around with different quick swap nozzles for example. But from my initial impressions of this machine in my real world testing, I have no problems telling you that I think the K1C is a great machine. Now, please keep in mind Creality provided these products to me free of charge in exchange for making this video. But as a YouTuber who sometimes gets given free stuff to review, a little secret is that half of the things I wouldn't want to spend my own money on. The K1C on the other hand, well, I think it's a quality product at a good price. Especially since here in Australia, it's $150 less expensive than the similar Bamboo Lab P1S. So yeah, from my experiences, I wouldn't have any regrets if I did purchase this machine. And I'm going to keep using the K1C for my projects, and you'll definitely see it around on my channel in the future. So please let me know if you have any questions and I'll try my best to answer them. Cheers.